Hello and welcome. You're watching Hypnotherapy Medicine for the Mind TV here at WCTV. I'm your host, certified consulting hypnotist Alan Alves. My practice is in Fall River, Mass. In the world of hypnotherapy, whatever your mind can conceive, your body can achieve. Our topic today is how hypnosis can help you ease your pain, acute or chronic, in a lot of cases, eliminate the pain altogether. I'll be joined shortly by my daughter, Deborah Alves, a consulting hypnotist in Carson City, Nevada, who will share her personal experience with hypnotic pain management, including how she went through a major surgery without any anesthesia at all. Hypnosis has been used for centuries to control pain, from major amputation during the Civil War to the resetting of broken limbs. Hypnosis is excellent for producing analgesia and anesthesia. Analgesia is the absence of pain, whereas anesthesia means the absence of the sensation or numbness. Now, pain is a signal that sometimes something needs attention. Pain should be taken seriously and never treated as just all in the mind. I only use hypnosis to help alleviate pain after the signal that something is wrong has been fully addressed. It's vital that you or anyone else gets checked out if you're in any kind of pain. It would be a gross malpractice if you alleviated one's pain from a chronic headache and they died six months later from a brain tumor. The point that I'm building here is that a person's psychological attitudes, beliefs, expectations, and well-being all have direct effects on the way they experience pain. Depression, anxiety, boredom, relaxation, all influence the intensity of physical pain. The mind and body influence one another. Hypnosis can be used to influence influence both psychological reference to the pain and the physical experience of it. So, when treating someone for pain, you need to discover how the person feels about that pain. Do they see it as something that is ruling their life that will last forever and they can do nothing about it? Or do they feel it's just part of their current life but won't last forever and it's something they can control to some extent by their behavior. You also need to let your client know in no uncertain terms that you know they are in pain. Let them describe their pain to you fully. You'll notice how amazingly descriptive people can become with pain. For example, they may describe the pain as searing or scalding or or bowl, boiling, stabbing, dull, sharp, electric, throbbing, pulsing, so on. They really want someone to understand their experience of the pain. I note the descriptive words they use because I can use those metaphors to help them hypnotically. I look at the metaphors the client used to describe the pain and use them in the practice. For example, a stabbing pain can be cushioned. One woman I helped in the way told me in hypnosis she could still feel the stabbing, but it, was not, but it was buffered now by a comfortable cushion and no longer bothered her. A burning pain can be cooled, and the pulse of a pulsating pain can be slowed and eventually stopped altogether. In this way, we're building rapport with the pain sufferer by inhabiting their pain metaphor and using that metaphor to modify their experience of the pain. While hypnotized, I try not to use the word pain because it's a painted word. You can almost feel that word, much like lemon can almost make you mouth water. When we experience pain, the body typically tenses up, which then creates an increase of sensation which causes more tension, thus creates a cycle of tension stress, fear, and pain. Relaxation technique can help alleviate this. When our minds relax, our bodies follow. I'm gonna quote some dry facts here, but they're, they're quite noteworthy. 
According to the WebMD research, it shows that medical hypnosis can help with both sudden or acute pain and long-term chronic pain from cancer burns, cancer burns, rheumatoid arthritis, also to ease that anxiety some people feel before surgery. When researchers at Mount Sinai Hospital in Medicine, New York, analyzed 18 studies, they found moderate to large pain relieving effects from hypnosis, supporting its use for pain management. 13 of those studies were identified that compared outcomes from hypnosis for the treatment of chronic pain. The findings indicate that hypnosis interventions consistently produce significant decreases in pain associated with a variety of chronic pain problems. Also, hypnosis was generally found to be more effective than non-hypnotic interventions, such as physical therapy or education. Most of the hypnosis interventions for chronic pain include instructions and self-hypnosis. And the Arthritis Foundation study showed that more than 75% of people with arthritis-related diseases experience significant pain relief using hypnosis. New advances in brain functioning imaging, such as MRIs and uh, PET, which is positive transmission tomography, scanning techniques that have allowed to use hypnosis, to see hypnosis and to modulate the activity of the brain during hypnosis pain relief and it proves that hypnosis works with alleviating pain. This appears to allow sensation that would normally be experienced as painful to long, no longer have the suffering or negative emotion that would normally be associated with them. Mind over matter, a phrase we've all heard before, it typically interpreted to mean that we can use our mind to overcome a situation or even a physical condition. For pain sufferers, this means that a technique such as hypnosis could help overcome the feeling of pain. There is considerable evidence for the effectiveness of hypnosis as a treatment for acute and chronic pain. With that, I'd like to welcome our guest, Deborah Alves of Envision Hypnosis in Carson City, Nevada. Welcome, Debbie. Thank you for having me, Steph. Now, um, tell us about a little bit about yourself. You, uh, you can tell us a little bit about the painless childbirth that you've uh, worked with in, uh, as a hypnotist. And uh, then later we'll talk about your personal experience with hypnosis on surgery. Well, I was um, certified in painless childbirth uh, about 2000, and it was, it's been a great journey and a great experience working with women uh, to help them to have to enjoy their births and uh, to for them to birth their children without the pain or discomfort that is associated with the Hollywoodized birthing experience. Uh, it's it's a wonderful program. Um, they are able to work with their partner and do some deep breathing techniques, relaxation techniques, and they can determine uh, the amount of the experience they want to feel. For example, they can choose to have no feeling whatsoever um, because or they can choose to have some type of feeling so that they can experience, you know, still experience the birth of their child. Um, it's, people have been doing this um, technique for many, many years. There's um, several different methods. Uh, there's the Murray Mongan method, which I had started out with, with a um, hypnobirthing. Um, and that is also a, an educational program where uh, it's, I think it's up to six weeks now where a woman takes a course one day a week and she and her partner will uh, go through the process of you know becoming educated and, and practicing during the week and come to the next program. Um, what's wonderful about this it's it does not only help the woman when she's giving birth um, but 
it helps the child as well. Uh, we have many reports that because the mother had uh, had used this during her hypnobirthing uh, process and, and um, throughout a pregnancy and she realized how relaxed she was and how uh, things in her life were just, she just wasn't so frantic or anything else, like she didn't have any worries or cares, you know, she had concerns. But this is something that she continued with her children and, um, and then taught them. And so they incorporated it in their lives and, you know, they do this as a family and, they, you know, the hypnosis, they do either do it as a family or as individuals. And they talk about the quality of their life as they implement self-hypnosis in their life. So, so they learn self-hypnosis and yes. that throws the quote, labor pains out the window? Well, yeah. They... Um, a woman, there were many videos on, um, on, uh, online, on YouTube, and um, the mom w is shown having a very relaxed birth. And, and a lot of doctors and nurses are very shocked by this because they can't understand why this woman isn't having all this pain, yelling and screaming. Like when I gave birth to my children, there was a woman screaming on the other end, and I it was my first child, and I screamed. At, I was nervous, and I said to the doctor, "Am I going to start experiencing that? This is before hypnosis." And she says, "No." And I was able to relax and just enjoy my birth. I didn't know anything about hypnosis at the time, but um, but actually, you were doing hypnosis, which a lot of people doing hypnosis experience yes. hypnosis and don't even realize Another that. Another benefit it. of the because what happens is when a woman is pregnant. Um, she often hears a lot of these f stories, these traumatizing stories. Oh, when I had, you know, my children, this is what I experienced. And so they put a, a lot of fear in her. Yeah, they program them with fear. Especially yeah. a first time mom, you program with fear and they don't know what to expect. They hear all the horror stories. And so they go in there and they may even have some other problems going on which might be financial and you know a lot of worries and concerns so what happens is as a mother is when she's pregnant she um, begins to fear have anxiety and that causes the muscles to tighten mm -hmm. and uh, so in without hypnosis and and remaining in this situation when the woman goes to give birth and that baby is coming down uh, is being birthed down, what happens is those muscles are tight and you're trying to push a baby through or, or breathe the baby down into a, a tight muscles and trying to get them through. So that causes a lot of pain because you're getting that resistance. Now with hypnosis, what we do is we help the woman to relax, especially uh, when she goes early she, uh, during her pregnancy to learn these techniques and incorporate them. Um, you know, she's she's mastered it by the time she has had her given birth and so when she goes to breathe down her baby the muscles are relaxed because the woman's body is designed to give birth yeah. it's designed to give birth the, the bone shift the, everything prepares for the birth of that child and so there is no reason why she should have pain barring in uh, you know extenuating circumstances so the, I mean, even the baby's bones shift in the head to bring it through the canal. And so when she gives birth and, and, it's, and everything is relaxed, she can just naturally, we don't tell her to push, we tell her to breathe down her baby. And she will breathe down that baby and she will, um, instead of pushing, because the body will naturally move the baby down um, through that birth canal. Oh. So the pain and discomfort is just diminished and almost, yes. and, and the, a, the added advantage is uh, there's no epidermal or chemicals going into the mother exactly. or the baby. So that, exactly. that's another advantage. Exactly. They birth so, them in the water. They birth them. Um, it, we encourage them. We, it's just encouraging because, you know, they, they're, it's up to them to decide and we educate them on the um, different drugs and things. Because one, no matter what that drug is put into the woman, the baby will receive it. Mm -hmm. And that is also demonstrated when it comes time to lactate and, and to feed the baby. A baby that doesn't have those chemicals in it will respond best to nursing. Um, they will even look for the breast because it's an instinct. Um, in some cases, we've had videos where the newborn baby is placed on the mother's 
uh, stomach, and then he, the infant will attempt to crawl towards the breast. Um, so, and that's, but when you have a child that has Pitocin or some of these other drugs and it's gotten into their system, that won't happen and it delays breastfeeding. So, there's maybe so a many smarter people. baby, maybe? <laughs> they're not, <laughs> you know, they, the, they would, I wouldn't say that they're smarter, it's just that their senses aren't dulled by oh, drugs. Okay. So, um, but, the, um, the painless childbirth, the hypnosis that helps them to move away from that. Also with hypnosis, we've had success in turning breech babies. So um, especially if the mom comes in, you know, she's later in her term, or sometimes the baby just turns and you have no reason why. But we've had success in having the mom relax and, the, and turning the baby inside the womb. Oh, I could. So... You women out there that are pregnant and want to have a painless childbirth and have no, no pain delivering that baby and no chemicals in your body when you consider hypnotherapy, hypnosis for painless childbirth. Give us a call. I can refer you uh, to anyone. Of course, Deborah's in Nevada, so if you're in Nevada, I can refer you. But we do it at my office and some offices around in the area. But... Getting back to your personal experience with pain management, uh, now I know you were, uh, when you're working out of uh, uh, my office when you first began, you opted to have some type of surgery, which was actually chronicled in, in the Heart and Soul magazine, uh, and it was really featured in the magazine about the surgery you went through without any anesthesia at all. Why don't you tell us about that? Well, uh, it started in about 2000. I had just come out of school for hypnosis and I hadn't even had a, received a certificate yet. I, was, I had a growth, an internal growth that was benign and I wanted it or needed it removed. So I spoke with my doctor and asked if I could use hypnosis instead of general anesthesia. And I explained to him a little bit about it, and he was excited. He says, you know, he says, I've heard so much about this, but I've never witnessed it. He says, let me see if I can get an anesthesiologist on board, and, you know, we'll meet and discuss this further. So we did. And the first thing they asked me, they said, okay, we have a question. How are we going to do this? And I hadn't given it much thought, and I said, well, this is a first time for all of us, so why don't we set up the operating room as if hypnosis wasn't going to happen. That way, if you feel that you need to write on in. They said, that's a great idea. They said, but how are we going to know when you're, you're in hypnosis? I says, well, you know those clamps you use in surgery, those, you know, the tight ones? I said, oh, ouch, yeah. Just on a very sensitive spot in me. I says, if I don't flinch, you know I'm ready. He goes, oh, I'm going to know you're ready. So... <laughs> Um, we had proceeded to schedule it at the Fall River Surgery Center at the time. I'm not sure if, um, where that is at the moment, but uh, it was in Fall River Surgery Center, and I couldn't find a hypnotherapist that was willing to do my therapy, so I had to do it myself. And um, Yeah, because Dad didn't want to do it. <laughs> so I, um, what I did was I put it on cassette. I, I wrote my own therapy and I put it on cassette and then I listened to it for about a week before going to bed and everything and I included in there uh, not just for um, pain management but also to reduce blood flow and also to hold on to that as I healed. Yep. So, um, yeah, hypnosis is good for that. It helps you heal quicker and yes. yeah. Uh, and to reduce any kind of swelling. So. My, I made three triggers. When I walked up to the building, that sight would become numb. I didn't know exactly where it was inside my body, but I knew my subconscious mind did. And then... Um, so you, you did that prior to going there? You yes. Like a self-hypnosis trigger, the trigger yes. that, that was anesthesia the or analgesia, whatever it is at that time. Okay. Exactly. So the second trigger was that once they put me on the gurney, I would go numb from a certain region. And then once they put me into OR, I would go numb from the neck down because I wanted to make sure I didn't want to feel anything. So yes, and, and so um, what happened was when I 
the person that brought me there, I had called someone to bring me, but they couldn't make it, so they gave me a substitute. That person had given me some negative suggestions before going in there, but this is what was really interesting about the hypnosis. Uh, they had said, that's not going to work, I don't know, you're crazy, and they waited till I was right at the door before they said anything. <laughs> so, but I didn't, you know, I, I just didn't bother listening, and I walked in, and so... Um, when I told the nurses that I was going to be using hypnosis instead of anesthesia, and of course it was in my paperwork, they said, do you want any Valium? I said, no, I don't want anything. I said, are you sure? I said, sure. When they brought me in the OR, the, uh, actually, it was, well, when they, they put me on the gurney, at some point the nurse came in and they had, uh, I think I was in the OR at the time, and the nurse came in asking me again if I wanted something. And I said, no. And uh, she, I really could hear her eyes rolling. I could practically see it in my head because she's like, "Oh no, she doesn't want any, um, and she doesn't want any medicine or anything like that." And they said, "Okay." A non-believer. Exactly. So I did bring the cassette with me. I, I didn't feel that I needed it, but I I didn't know what else what I was going to do while I was laying there because I know I was going to be fully awake. So I just put it on my head and I had closed my eyes and I was just listening. And at one point. The nurse had knocked it off and so it came off my ears and I didn't want to reach over and grab it and I noticed that there was a blue tarp over me so that I couldn't see anything. And I looked at the anesthesiologist and I says, you know, I says, uh, where's Dr. Lowney? And he says, and he goes, oh, I'm right here. He says, I cut you and you didn't even finish. Yeah. This is awesome. He says, this was hardly any blood bleeding or anything. And I started telling him about the therapy I use and meanwhile, this procedure is still going on. And the, the nurses, she didn't say anything, but her eyes big behind her mask and everything. And the anesthesiologist, he says, you're going to put me out of business. I says, actually, this would be great for you to learn. I says, because then if you use hypnosis, not every patient would be able to, you know, it varies in yeah. the depth in which they yeah. would go, but you would use the, uh, less anesthesia, yeah. chemical anesthesia. Yeah, which is also good for you. have natural anesthesia and it would balance it out. And so um, we joked around a little bit, and Delaney says, oh, wait, just hold up, don't laugh. <laughs> he says, I don't want to make a mistake here. And we were laughing, and so um, afterwards, they... Laughing through the surgery while he's cutting it up on you and... Laughing, laughing. Operating on you and stuff. Whatever he's doing down there. I didn't feel anything. Mm -hmm. I, I, I even forgot. But what is interesting was I remember that when the headset came off, all of a sudden, that person that drove me off, the thoughts came into my mind, and I almost forgot about this part, and I said, what happens if this doesn't work? What happens if this doesn't work? And he says, it's too late. He says, it's working. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, those, yeah. but what was nice, it also strengthened my faith in it, because even though that person gave me the suggestions, I still couldn't feel anything. And then, you know, that's when we continued with the conversation and joked around a little bit. And then um, when I went into recovery and, um, talked to the nurses and I had to use the bathroom and they said, oh, we can help you get up. I'm like, nope, too late, I gotta get up. And I jumped up and I ran into the bathroom to come and they came out and there's a few nurses that were out there. They're like, um, you don't have to stay here. This is for people that are in recovery. We can see you don't need it. So they're talking to me about the hypnosis and, and everything and um, I was telling them about it and stuff and a couple of doctors came in and, and so then um, I went back to get dressed and my sister came and she talked about the hypnosis with them and everything else like that and they were just amazed. But uh, I've heard since then I was the first person to have these uh, use hypnosis and surgery over the Fall River Surgery Center and um, since then um, I've heard there are others. Yes, there, ha there have been others and uh, well that's a very interesting story and like I said it was as a uh, uh, in here, in this National Magazine, Heart and Soul Magazine, uh, even some of the doctors commented in here about uh, how he made the incision and you didn't even flinch. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's the power of hypnosis. Yes. Uh, so I'm sure a lot of people will say like, oh, I don't know if I want to do that for surgery, but painless childbirth, that's pretty, pretty sensible to do that more health, healthier baby and uh, no pain. Labor pain's gone. In addition, I want to make another point that I had forgotten was that with the um, hypnosis, I had to have a checkup six weeks later and the doctor wanted to test the site 
it was interesting because the hypnosis had shrunk to that spot and it was only numb where the site was, where this incision had been. And he says, you need to let go of that uh, hypnosis. I said, oh no, that's my pain medicine. <laughs> so, yes. And that was just from that one week of hypnosis. I didn't have to repeat it. And after, uh, after you completed that surgery because you weren't in anesthesia, you drove home? Mm -hmm. Well, I, roll, roll, they wouldn't roll. permit it. Protocol, yeah. I had to have a drive. Yeah, the drive, but I mean, you went, you went home had after. Had no one discomfort, was. nothing. So. Yeah, just went about my life. It was good. Oh, it's great. Thank you so much for giving us that information yeah. and allowing the people to realize that how hypnosis can help you with pain management. You may already be on pain management regime and that's a good thing. Please consider medical hypnosis as a complementary therapy to what you're doing, allowing you to take less pain control medication and to suffer less side effects. My time is up. Thank you for yours. Have a good night tonight and a better day tomorrow. And remember, whatever your mind can conceive, your body can achieve.